Let's see. Uh, Electronic Arts is set to hold a meeting this week to decide the fate of the ill-received and supported Anthem. While plans to overhaul the game were set in motion, project lead departures have severely hampered their developments. Uh, the current team behind the overhaul, internally known as Anthem Next, comprises of 30 individuals, which is a mere third of what sources cite is necessary to continually produce content. Uh, Anthem Next is slated to include core changes to the game systems, interface, and mechanics. Um, I, I think this might be the vibe of the, of the room. I don't give a flying fuck about Anthem. I think it's like the most generic, boring thing a company could have put out, but it has cool Iron Man flight mechanics. They can fly. Yeah. Yeah. I like flying. All right. I've, I've, I've spent a lot of flying, but yeah, just if you, if, if you really think there's something to say, just make it like, make literally make a new game called Anthem next. Like, I, just, I think they need a. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I, was, I think I think just 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 to say like, hey, we tried. It's not working. Kill it and make it make something new. I I think like it, it's like such a mediocre reception up front, and like no one has cared about. It. No one's really like stuck with it ever since then. It's uh, what is it's, it's that Mean Girls? I mean, like, stop trying to make Anthem a thing. It's not going to be a thing. I think just like if you want to do a sequel, like just cut your losses, like and just dedicate to it versus mm-hmm. trying to do life support. That's not going to yield any results. Um, like like ultimately at the end at the end of the day, I hope that they make it better. I don't know why anyone would ever hope for it to be worse, but oh, I mean EA EA is the company that fucking got rid of fucking Visceral Games. They got rid of Dead Space, and then they put so much money and funding behind something like this that's just such a mediocre product I, it's i i don't think i fully trust ea to make uh bigger decisions as to uh where they should where should they where they should be putting the resources and what studios to close and whatnot mm-hmm. um any thoughts blaine <laughs> <laughs> Those are my I, I fuck. I fucking love you. <laughs> um, you I pretty much work. agree with y'all. I just care. Yeah. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. When I said before, like, yeah, we, I wish you'd be you'd be stuff would pay taxes and mobile. That goes doubly for EA. I, oh, yeah. I don't care. I don't care. Yeah. I don't give a shit. And, uh, and I feel bad for like again. I feel bad for people that work on these games that do like. Like, like, let's be real. Anthem didn't get the way it is because someone was like, this is a great idea. It got the way it is because someone was like, well, here's our idea. And then executives went, how, how, can, how can we make some money off of these motherfuckers? These stupid motherfuckers. How can we make as much money as possible? <laughs> Please. I, Daddy needs a new double yacht. And that's, and that's I mean, I, I, again, I'm speaking in hyperbole, but I'm probably not. If, honestly, knowing how stupid some of these motherfuckers are. Um, yeah, I, I just don't care. I I, <laughs> I, I want to know what kind of fucking contract that um what's what's the uh studio <laughs> head that was behind infinity <laughs> war and the, no 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 oh, no, no no sorry no, that, that's bioware <laughs> my, uh, brain, my brain went in a different direction <laughs> <Go on. laughs> the uh, studio head that was responsible for um the original call of duty modern warfare and then went to form respawn it was it was, was it frank zampella and know. Jason something I don't know I want to know whatever contract they fucking managed to negotiate with EA that like yes they did get screwed on Titanfall 2's release because it was sandwiched between fucking Battlefield 1 and uh, whatever Call of Duty was that year I believe it was a Infinity not Infinity War fucking it's Avengers <laughs> Infinite Warfare mm-hmm. um, so, so they screwed You're them on that me, for- <laughs> I think it's good to, good to control I get to control Tony Stark and commit war crimes hell yeah it's a, they need the Sokovia Accords man that's it's uh, go on I'm sorry um shit um fuck I lost my so yeah they, they've been sorry <laughs> They've been screwed on that front from EA, but aside from that, they seem to get like a giant amount of like creative leeway, especially on, uh, I think we did a story on here a couple weeks back where uh, Respawn actively enforces like a no crunch policy for uh, Apex Legends. And like, so they've been slower on content rollouts, but they've just said like, yeah, no, we're not going to crunch. We refuse to do that. And for that to come from a studio that's owned by EA, they must have like a very a uh, specific like like contract or something and, and that yeah. they that they have creative liberty and they also have the liberty to decide what working conditions are like so isn't apex also like the second most popular battle royale thing out there or is warzone 
than most. Because I know Fortnite is like dominating still. I mm-hmm. if it's not second, I would imagine I'll at least be third. I think yeah. PUBG's kind of fallen by the wayside. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. But uh Apex is a hell of a game. Titanfall 2 is a hell of a game. Fucking uh Jedi Fallen Order. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I have mm-hmm. it on Game Pass, mm-hmm. I still need to play it. It is so good. Get that double lightsaber early. I'm gonna try. I love and, well, um, I like dual fisting lightsabers more, but that's besides the <laughs> And uh, like so- uh like Ramen Nomad, uh m- one of my patrons on Patreon. Thank you. Um they, they point out like, yeah, there's no Final Fantasy fourteen uh resurrection story for Anthem mm-hmm. where I mean and the fact that the Final uh, Final Fantasy fourteen, uh, a realm reborn was even a thing was like such a big su- substantial thing to come out of the gaming sphere. It, it's like a big um What's the word I want to use? It's it's a redemption story that paid off like so fucking well, and I don't see EA having either. This isn't necessarily aimed towards, towards like any individual uh, developers or who, whatever leads whatever, but I don't see EA um, uh, fostering the kind of passion or resources that are necessary for something like that. So I don't see yeah. being competent enough to do it. Honestly, like mm-hmm. like like okay, look. Let's not beat around the bush. Square Enix sucks in a big way, but they also do at least know how to get games out. And like, I don't know, like I I have as much as I don't have that much faith in Square Enix these days for certain reasons. I I'm not going to sit here and pretend that there is incompetent something. They at least do seem to have like. Even if it's despite themselves, they do seem to have these strand out hits. Like they have the Near series, they have um, Final Fantasy fourteen. Do I think it's a big comp turnaround? Um, I believe it was Derek at SDGC that had pointed out um, the time frame of Final Fantasy fourteen's turnaround was three years. So it had already been had been fucked for three years, and then they turned it around into mm-hmm. un- undeniably the most popular MMO out there. Um, but again, like I don't, I don't see, I don't see EA and the management within the mm-hmm. within that company being competent enough to actually not only turn Anthem around but get it sustainable. I mean, like, like let's look at Destiny Two. Destiny Two launched and like you had like it was it was divisive as hell. People either really really loved it and were all about it and were seeing where it was going, or people were like, "This is a goddamn like train wreck." It's it's just microtransaction, microtransaction. I paid sixty dollars for almost half a game or a quarter of a game, um, and regardless of where you fell on that spectrum, they have more or less turned that around. Partially in part because they left Activision, but um, and the fact that like now there's still things that come up that like maybe people don't like and don't love, but that took them what? Now we're at like uh, when did Destiny I One came out twenty fourteen. So. Believe. So we're about six to seven years out from Destiny One's release, and they've they've now kind of turned it around, but it's still not guaranteed. I'm gonna be I'm not saying that like you know I'm not saying that like I'm shit. I'm not trying to shit on Destiny Two. I actually really like that game. I'm not shitting on any of the developers. I'm just trying to state object objectively like what I, th- the I think a is. lot of it comes down to like the business model that Activision had them on. It's like here's a very specific like release um, yeah. or yearly release. Like here's DLC one, here's DLC two, here's the big expansion, here's the sequel. And so I, I, get, I would assume that's the reason why Destiny Two even exists in the first place. Well, they yeah, wanted like a biannual uh, release, and they well, and yeah they the- managed to turn it around just because they're in control of it now. Yeah, and they they made the smart decision of okay, we we want to do we keep the microtransactions or do we just make the or do we take them away and stop and do we keep the microtransactions and make the game free, which is what they did, or do we keep the do we get rid of the microtransactions but still cost a premium? And mm-hmm. I think they made the right call on that. And again, I just I notice more competency out of Bungie as a company than I have with EA. So it, it's weird to me, like the. I'm sorry, go ahead. Well, I just, I don't know, like, maybe because based on what you said about Respawn, like, if Respawn could get out from under EA, may, wait, I'm fucked up. Sorry. Bioware. If Bioware could, like, possibly get, like, maybe a thing that, like, like Respawn has, or, um, or, be, or go off on their own and basically be, or, or, like, an Obsidian, where, like, technically they're owned by Microsoft now, but, like, they're still pretty much doing whatever they want. Mm-hmm. They still have their own autonomy. 
Exactly. Like I would, I would like to see a Bioware that's able to do that, but also I don't know how much of that incompetence is also in Bioware itself. Cause I, I don't know as much about Bioware. Maybe it's it fundamentally not the same studio as like, even, I know it's uh, not. Yeah. I know it's not. I just mean, as far as competence, I'm not even looking. That's why when people are like, Oh no, like, like that's why I don't give a shit about the mass effect re-release. I'm sorry. Like I'm not trying to shit on it. I just, I, I don't really care about that series that much these days anyway. And also it's none of the same people making it. So I'm not like really even getting nostalgic for it. I, th- I think um, I, I'm not trying to like fucking swing fucking PC whatever around here. Like I don't give a fuck, but those games still look pretty damn good on PC. Um, and you'd barely need it even like semi decent, competent hardware to get them to run fucking beautifully. Yeah. No, they look fine. Um, so like, so like at, l- at least like my, um, not, not expectations like my my i don't even want to use the word hype but my like my hype for the legend collection is like oh yeah i look a little better but i mean would, i i'm surprised you didn't think it was too aspirational oh yeah <laughs> uh God, but um, I, got you with that. Uh, I, for, I forgot one thing uh going back to square enix not even necessarily yeah. in regards to the whole um uh realm reborn stuff with final fantasy 14 the relaunch um, I, I feel like th- they, as a publisher, are more willing to at least let their, w- whether it's uh, developers that they own or if they're if publishing deals for other developers, whatever, they're more willing to do weird shit versus EA, where Absolutely. it's like very cut and dry, just like we need like this to appeal to like this very specific demographic and whatnot. Uh, Square Enix is at least willing to do weird shit, and that weird shit uh, allowed for something as crazy as A Realm Reborn. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. or that's why i brought up near like i i can't think of any major AAA western studio or even like any other japanese triple a uh, publisher not studio publisher is what i meant to say and i think about it like g- giving someone like yoko taro that much creative control and also just the teams that he works with making these are so fucking weird like that I gotta give that to Square Enix at the very least. Like they, like you said, they do seem to give a little bit more of a freedom to the people developing shit. But they also have, they also have things like Dragon Quest to rely on. Literally the most popular RPG in the planet. Mm-hmm. How how is your Xbox uh, Game Pass version of that game going? It's good. Um, I got up to, I just broke out of uh, a dungeon, and I've met what I, who I I know is my first party member because he, he's on the box art and other stuff. For your mm. sake, I hope that there's cross save because I know you're gonna cave and buy the Switch version. Oh, I'm gonna. <laughs> yeah, I played. I played it on Switch. I like. I, I would have in... already if I fucking had the money. <laughs> like I got everyone to a hundred. I beat the entire game. Got everyone to a hundred. I love that game's fantastic. Let's see. I'm loving Dragon it so Quest, far. Dragon Quest Eleven is. Wow, Everybody, perfect. this is now a Dragon Quest podcast. Hell yeah. I have Dragon, <laughs> I have Dragon Quest 8 like, right there. Let's go. I've never played the other... Well, no. I've played the mobile port of Dragon Quest mm. 1 that is on the Switch. Which is mm. fine. I know yeah. the graphics are not apparently great. Mm. But well, if, it, you like, if you like 11, then 8's the, 8 it's its direct... Like, they went like, hey, let's make 8 again and made 11. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I have never and I know played 10 a single... is like an MMO that never came out here. Yeah, it was on it was on the Wii and Wii U. Yeah. I have yet to play a single Dragon Quest, and I'm assuming this might be a good jumping on point. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh eight might if you if you do go back to eight, there might be some quality of life stuff that feels weird just because it's old, but yeah. I would still recommend the uh the PlayStation version over the 3DS or the mobile version of eight, just because um, Tr- the PS Mesa, I, my, my will to bust out my 3DS is non-existent. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I would say the, the, the problem with it is that the only the as far as I'm aware, only the PS2 version has the fully orchestrated music as well as um the 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 the, the, the great voice acting. Really. Okay. Yes. Oh wait. So then, which was the version that had the MIDI? Was that is that the 3DS and the PlayStation One version? No, no, no. For for eight. Oh wait. Sorry, sorry, sorry. So 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 for PS2 for the release of PS for the for the PS2 version of Dragon Quest Eight, at least the, mm-hmm. at least the Western version, um, it has you know fully it's fully voice acted, um, and it has fully orchestrated music. If we're talking about Dragon Quest Eleven, the original release on PS4 and PC did not have 
it was was like mini music. The switch was the first time the music was orchestrated. No, I know that. I, I, yeah, okay. the, I just remember this not starting with eleven. This started all the way back with like fucking whatever Dragon Quest, because like you'd have certain versions would have midis and certain versions mm-hmm. would have orchestral, and it would because of that shithead fucking Holocaust and I or motherfucker. Yeah, we, yeah. I just, I just, I just, I just kind of. <laughs> 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 yeah, I, I like. I take. I make. I take a mental note to like recognize it, and then I'm and then I shut it out as I play the game. <laughs> I turned on. I turned on the MIDI version for like a second, just because I was like, I was curious. I was like, it's not that bad. Let me let me check it out. And I tried it, and I was just like, I felt like I got thrown into a time machine to like 2006. Oh, it's visceral. It's visceral. It's, the difference it, is visceral. It slaps you in the face. It's like wow. Oh. <laughs> wow, them horns though. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Dragon Quest State. Like to the like to the point where um wait, is it Dragon Quest Eight or Seven? I'm pretty sure it's eight. Like to the point where the, the later on in eleven, you're going to be grouped with somebody else and your number is eleven and their number is eight. Like that's, like, that's awesome. Yeah, that's awesome. Like it's very clear. Like they're saying, like this is this is essentially eight two, and it's it's, it's great. I love I, I fucking love both of those games. Anyway, <laughs> hey, so sorry. You said that you had a jumping off point. Sorry. Wait, did I? I'm pretty sure you did. Like, oh, I've never played Dragon Quest, but this seems like a good jumping off point. Oh, it's so a jumping on point. Like, I like, as oh, it'd be like my first a- entry into the series. I guess. Oh, I thought you were talking about like segue. Oh no 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 no. But I'm my, assuming you have a segue now. Oh, se- semi, somewhat. This is the smoothest segue I've ever done in my entire life. <laughs> um, 